Um, you, you definitely kept him safe, and it was definitely thought out, and I appreciate that, and and uh, am looking forward to the school year. So Great thank year. you guys. Thank you. you want to say anything about the beautification committee oh, yeah. at all? Uh, yes, the Keep Cape Beautiful committee uh, is doing their annual litter tour in September, and they're asking for council participation at uh, one of several dates. So if you all could get back to me, check your email. Um, that's going to be the 15th, 17th, or 22nd from 2 to 4. It's not to pick up trash, it's just to observe trash. I know, I was confused too. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and, and Stacy needs some help because her awards last. So Yeah, sorry. <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll just be going out, checking some areas that are on our map list and then uh, ranking our litter scores, and then we'll, we'll do a mass cleanup and we'll report some of these incidences to uh, nuisance and abatement and public works. So, And also, the committee has ordered 800 bulbs to be planted throughout the city. So we're... I think it's several thousand. Oh, okay. Okay, so we're looking for several locations across the city to plant flowers, um, city property, uh, we've, we've come up with a couple locations, so if anybody is looking for some flowers in their area, just reach out to the committee and we'll see if we can put some you down in October. We will, and we'll be looking. Well, if they got one of the little gizmos you dig with. And yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. So they'll be deer, deer resistant. Deer resistant. Yeah. So, so, um, so if think of some ideas or if anybody wants to reach out to their ward member, they want some beautiful flowers in their ward. Maybe we can get some in some city spaces. So. In regards to trash in Ward 6, though, you, you have the unfortunate I circumstance of, of having <laughs> Highway 55 run through most of your ward. There's a lot of trash there as people come up and down. And, and same goes for Bloomfield Road sometimes. People travel in and out of the city going south and it seems like they get something to eat and just toss their trash out. So. Well, it was interesting. I appreciated the, the email, and, and I'd like to hear more because there are roads that, you know, technically aren't Cape City responsibility, um, but they still right. look bad sometimes. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. um, looking forward to hearing more. Yeah, absolutely. We'll work with Julia and their crew. So, and also, I just had one other thing that. Um, Council Member Kinder and I attended the uh, first community crisis conference that was hosted by Yamika Robinson and her Justice for Maddie group and uh, Pastor Renita Green. And that was on um, July 22nd at Kapaha, and it was really a wonderful event. We all learned a lot from each other, and I think they have some great ideas coming to present to Council. Okay. Anybody else? If not, uh, I'll report. Uh, we continue to have the uh, morning briefings two mornings a week with uh, Cape County Health Department and other officials around the county about the COVID crisis that's facing us. Uh, uh, there are still some people not happy with the mask mandate, uh, and they make themselves uh, uh, present at every county commission meeting now here. Uh, but I will say uh, that it looks like it's beginning to work. Uh, we had, uh, at one time, back in uh, late May, early June, we had less than 10 active cases in the county. And we began to see a surge after reopening. And there were many days when we had 25, 35, 45 new cases per day. And next thing you know, we've got well over 200 active cases. The last week, after the mask order has been in place for a while, instead of getting 25 and 35 and 40 cases per day, it's uh, teens and single digits. Uh, just today, we had 14 new cases, but 49 recovered. We are now under 100 active cases at 95 as of today, and that is a big, big plus. And if we can keep that trend going and get down to where we were before, then uh, we will have 
we will have beat this thing in Cape County at least back down to where it's manageable and uh, maybe we can have this mask order kind of relaxed a little bit although I still think that if you're in in uh, crowded situations uh, maintain social distancing and, and use hand sanitizer all you can because it helps it helps to prevent it and it's not going away it's here and uh, it'll be here the rest of the year and even if they get a vaccine you're still going to have strains that may be here so uh, just do those things and we'll get rid of this thing quickly I uh, uh, did a program at Cape West Rotary uh, last week on kind of the state of Cape. I've got one of the Kiwanis this week. Uh, I'd like to announce that uh, the Missouri Main Street organization had an excellent awards ceremony that was virtual this year because they did not meet. Uh, we had two separate entities in Cape win awards this year. One was the best facade rehabilitation under $10,000, and that was Mary Jane Bourbon Smokehouse. The other was a creative new event, uh, and Old Town Cape's Monster Mash Car Bash won that. It's kind of like a trunk or treat, and there were over 1,000 people down there that night, so it was, a, it was a big success, and probably will be doing that in the future. Uh, so kudos to, uh, to Old Town Cape for that, and to Mary Jane Bourbon Smokehouse for winning that award. That's a good thing. Uh, we did have a good retreat on Friday that uh, uh, Robbie mentioned. Uh, it was on Zoom. And uh, I think we discussed a lot of the comprehensive plan. We discussed a lot of different things ongoing and uh, kind of give us and staff some direction for not only this year, but years beyond and uh, I thought it was uh, I thought it was very good, very good content. And uh, it was a, for a for a Zoom meeting, it was it was good. How you like those Zoom meetings, Dan? You doing okay? <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Excellent. Uh, one of the other things that. Uh, that I wanted to bring up now and and talk about because it was talked about before was the uh, the issue with the planning and zoning meeting and, and members and I have uh, a letter that was addressed to the city council and the P and Z and I've gave each copy of the council uh, a copy of this and I will read that letter and it says dear members of the city council and P and Z commission on July 8, 2020, prior to the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, we had a private conversation and did not realize that the microphone was live. If anything in that conversation offended anyone, we certainly apologize. And that was written by Kevin Greaser and by Tom Welch. Uh, I really don't have anything else. We can, uh, Council, we can discuss this uh, when we have our discussion in a little bit, and uh, we'll have that discussion and go from there. Anybody else? Any comments? If not, uh, I'll entertain appearances regarding items not listed on the agenda. And I wanted to read a statement because we talked about this uh, at, uh, at our retreat and in other places. Uh, individuals who wish to make comments first must be recognized by the mayor and mayor pro tem. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. We would like you to face and speak directly to the city council and not to the audience. Uh, mem the mayor and council members will not engage or answer questions during this speaker's time at the podium. The timer will sound at the end of the speaker's time if it goes five minutes. After all members of the public have appeared, the city council may respond uh, to issue and discuss issues that were brought up. Uh, if it's something that needs to be referred to staff, uh, whether it's a nuisance issue or something else, we will do that 
and uh, and do it at that time so staff knows what direction to take with something that may come from the community. So at this time, is there anybody here who would like to approach the council and speak on an item that's not on the agenda? If not, we will go into the agenda review. Uh, council tonight, uh, we do have uh, two items that were inadvertently left off the agenda. Um, uh, transferred over and just didn't uh, transfer, so those items are on your uh, place. They, these are the second and third reading of the, um, the TIF project at the Middle and Broadway area for a tax increment financing redevelopment plan, as well as a uh, the agreement to accomplish that. So though we will need, uh, when it comes time to adopt the agenda, we'll need to add those two items to the consent agenda. And then at the time of the consent agenda, when it is read, uh, Eric will read the second, third read of those items. So those items are on the agenda, would need to be added to the agenda. Um, <clears throat> the rest of the agenda, we have, uh, we have tonight, um, we have uh, two public hearings. We have a public hearing to rezone the property at 1017 and 1019 Harmony Street uh, from R3 to CBD. Um, we'll have that, that public hearing as well as a, uh, the first reading of that uh, later in the agenda. And then uh, we have a public hearing for the proposed tax rates for the fiscal year ending June 30th. These are our tax rates which are set basically uh, regarding property tax uh, evaluations and uh, I always say it just really comes down to a, a math problem. We can only raise those taxes uh, to a small amount for inflation and so they uh, take the property values and then apply a formula to that that gives the new tax rates and so uh, that is what you have tonight and this is kind of the last piece of our bu budgeting process in setting these rates. We do this every year same thing each year, and uh, so uh, we'll have a public hearing and first reading of those proposed tax rates for this year. Um, it's in agenda items we have tonight. Uh, we have a record plat at Evans Castle Rock subdivision, second, third reading of that. We have the Eakins First subdivision, also the second and third reading. We have the uh, special uh, tax bills for the demolition of uh, some properties, uh, second, third reading of that. And then we have the um, ordinance appropriating uh, funds for operating expenses, capital expenditures, debt, debt services. We went through that last uh, meeting, and um, so this will be the second, third reading of that. That's kind of our end of year where we um, have funds that we move funds through and from one fund to another. Uh, this allows us to, uh, to do that. And then, um, and then we'll be accepting the improvements final payment of Skyville with the Bowton uh, Drive water main extension. Then we will have the two, hopefully, that we'll be adding, uh, the TIF project, the second and third reading of the, um, the TIF project, and then the agreement, the develop, redevelopment plan, and then the agreement to accomplish it. So those two items will be added and read during the consent agenda. Are there any of those items that you uh, would uh, need removed or to declare your uh, abstention. If not, then we have several rule ordinances tonight. We have uh, the conflicts of interest. Uh, this is uh, required by state statute that uh, every two years, yes. every two years we have to readopt the conflict of interest. If there are any changes required, we make those changes. This time we have no changes. It's the exact same thing we passed two years ago. Uh, but it is required to be passed as new each year, so this is the first reading of that. Uh, the next three uh, ordinances are regarding the annexing of land uh, out the 4072 State Highway K. Uh, the first one annexes the land, the second one uh, adds it to Ward 6, and then the third one uh, zones it as C2. So those three uh, first readings will be tonight, uh, followed by um, the hearing of the zoning property of 1017, 1019 in Harmony. Um, the 
zoning of that as uh, CBD uh, tonight. And then um, uh, the 14th is the, uh, the, the tax rate I talked about that hearing. That's the first reading of that bill. And then um, item 15 is a an item that I might ask uh, Eric to comment further on, but basically that the, the, uh, the state passed the new helmet law and with that it is less restrictive and then within that law it, it says that we can, that the city cannot pass something more restrictive and so this puts us in alliance with that basically the the new uh, state statute says that cities are prohibited from adopting helmet regulations and so because we had helmet regulations the this uh, gets rid of our helmet regulations However, the state statute does still require helmets in situations where someone is under the age of 26. And, uh, and so that requirement is still there. They are not uh, required to wear helmets under state law if they are over the age of 26. But that, this does not change the state law. Questions on that? How are we even going to police that? doesn't make any well whatever we'll go forward uh, it will be a, a challenge to um, the, the next one is uh, a similar uh, situation the state has passed uh, a, um, uh, a new statute that uh, re regarding the regulation of methamphetamine precursor drugs these are the pseudofedrins that you hear about uh, a few years ago, we passed a, a, an ordinance requiring a prescription for pseudofedrin, and now in order to be in compliance, I'll let Eric explain that for us. Basically, it's the same sort of a, a mindset. The legislature has removed from political subdivisions the ability to require prescriptions to purchase those products. Now, there is a, a, a time period on that, and uh, it, it could possibly revert in the event that... Uh, um, that the increase in cases occurs thereafter. Um, and so we've left the uh, language in the uh, ordinance so that uh, it is prohibited unless it's authorized by state law. So, uh, but this is to make our uh, ordinance consistent with state law. So then, so after we've passed it with three readings and the city of Cape Girardeau, the doctors will not have to send over a, a, a written prescription or, or for Sudafed. That, so then that is correct. And frankly, that statute says that any existing ordinance like that is void. So if you didn't do anything, the right. state statute already takes care of it. But, but we're trying to make our ordinance so it's consistent with now, state statute. The state statute goes into effect when? The 28th of August. Okay. And, and I, I mean, in defense of that, when we were, when a, the city originally passed that, we had a lot of meth labs being busted in Cape County and in the city of Cape. And from my conversation with, and even what Chief Blair told us on Friday and, and Judge Lewis, that because of the, the borders, you're seeing more of that coming, meth coming from, from those places instead of meth labs because it's much cheaper. And, and I guess apparently there haven't been any or very few meth labs in Cape County busted in quite some time, right, Chief? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Uh, meth is, is not something that's really put at home anymore. It's more of an imported drug now. So even your drug task forces are not running across meth labs out in the, out in the middle of the woods like they used to. Okay. So at least a silver lining on that question, maybe. If you want to call it that. So. Can you explain that time expiration? Is that like a sunset clause <coughs> in the state statute, or is it? It's more of a revisiting requirement, kind of, Nate. They're going to be looking at it over the period. Do you remember, Wes, it's, I think it's two years. Um, so the wording on it, ours, then, but while I'll, we are amending it, then says if they decide the ours would kick back in? We've, we've just said that it, in a, um, it is prohibited if it is prohibited by state law. So we have kept okay. that to that extent. Okay, um, that's what I was wondering. 
I was wondering if we were going to be more prohibitive, and if that was the case, how we were going to communicate that to the pharmacies, et cetera. No, so that, so that we didn't have to readopt definitions of, of pseudoephedrine drugs and meth precursors and all that kind of stuff. That's how we have done it. It is possible that at some point in the future we may get rid of even the, the other parts of the ordinance. That's nice. Thanks. Pharmacies are well aware of it. Last item we have is the uh, accepting of temporary construction easements for several um, property owners on the Good Hope drainage project. Um, first reading of that. Uh, we have no appointments tonight, and uh, if you have any other business, it can be addressed under other business. And then uh, we do have a uh, short closed session tonight. So, Mayor, that's all I have. Okay. That case will adjourn to regular session. Have a call over roll call. Bob Fox. Yes. Robbie Gard. Yes. Stacy Kinder. Yes. Shelly Moore. Yes. Dan Preston. Here. Nate Thomas. Here. Shannon Truxel. Mayor, you want me to make? Let me make. Uh, I'd like to make uh, an amendment to the consent agenda. Adding bill number 20 112 and bill number 20 113. Okay. Those are the items that Scott talk about, talked about. Do I hear a second? You've got to go to page, the Which, second page. Those are the bill number. number. Those are report numbers. I did the same thing. And then we will need a motion to adopt the agenda as amended. Uh, before I do that, I might add that the new ordinances numbers are going to change because one of those is 113. So they'll change to 114, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and so forth all the way down. Is that not correct? We're adding 2112 and 2113 as part of the consent agenda. So you can't have another 2113. Is that not, that's correct? Okay, so that's just a housekeeping thing we'll do as part of this. Okay. All those in favor of the Motion signified by saying aye. Aye. So we have adopted the amended agenda. We have two public hearings this evening. The first is a public hearing to consider a request to rezone property at 1017 and 1019 Harmony Street from R3 High Density Single Family Residential District to CBD Central Business District. Anybody here this evening to speak on behalf of that public hearing? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing. Second public hearing is a public hearing on proposed tax rates for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2021. Anybody here this evening to speak on behalf of that public hearing for property tax rates? for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2021. Seeing none, I will close that public hearing. Any individuals this evening who are here to make comments on items listed on the agenda this evening? Any comments or items on the agenda this evening? If not, we will move to the consent agenda. Eric? Bill number 20-108, an ordinance approving the record plan of Evans Castle Rock subdivision, ordinance approving the record plan of Evans Castle Rock subdivision. Bill number 20-109, an ordinance approving the record plan of Eakin First subdivision, ordinance approving the record plan of Eakin First subdivision. 
number 20-110, an ordinance authorizing the issuance of special tax bills on certain properties for the demolition of dangerous buildings and for nuisance abatements under the provisions of Chapter 7 and Chapter 13 of the Code of Ordinances, the City of Chicago, Missouri, an ordinance authorizing the issuance of special tax bills on certain properties for the demolition of dangerous buildings and for nuisance abatements under the provisions of Chapter 7 and Chapter 13 of the Code of Ordinances, the City of Chicago, Missouri, Number 20-111, an ordinance appropriating funds for operating expenditures, capital expenditures, debt service expenditures, and transfers for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2020 in the city of Cape Girard, Missouri, an ordinance appropriating funds for operating expenditures, capital expenditures, debt service expenditures, and transfers for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2020 in the city of Cape Girard, Missouri. Number 20-112, an ordinance proving a redevelopment agreement in connection with the North Middle Broadway Area Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Plan, an ordinance proving the redevelopment agreement in connection with the North Middle Broadway Area Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Plan. Number 20-113, an ordinance designating a portion of the city of Cape Girard, Missouri as a redevelopment area, approving the North Middle Broadway Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Plan, making findings related thereto and authorizing certain actions by city officials. An ordinance designating a portion of the city of Cape Girard, Missouri as a redevelopment area, approving the North Middle Broadway Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Plan, making certain findings related thereto, and authorizing certain actions by city officials. We just changed. Okay. Okay. I'll just read them differently. All right. You have before you the consent agenda? So moved. Motion by Mr. Gard. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Shannon. She beat you to the punch. Yeah. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries unanimously. New ordinances. Bill number 20-114. An ordinance readopting sections 2-76 to 2-83 of the City Code of Cape Girardeau, Missouri relating to conflicts of interest. So moved. Motion by Robbie, second by Nate. Uh, I understand this is just required what, every two years that we yep. do this. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Bill number 20-115, an ordinance annexing land to the city limits of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, located at 4072 State Highway K, upon the request of Mid-America Highway K, LLC. Motion by Nate. Second. Second by Shannon. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Bill number 20-116, an ordinance ex extending the boundaries of Ward 6 to include property newly annexed into the city limits of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. So moved. Motion by Robbie. Second. Second by Stacy. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. <coughs> Bill number 20-117, an ordinance amending Chapter 30 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri by zoning property located at 4072 State Highway KSC2, Highway Commercial District. Motion by Stacy. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Shannon. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Bill number 20-118, an ordinance amending chapter 30 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri by changing the zoning of property located at 1017 and 1019 Harmony in the city of Cape in the city and county of Cape Girardeau, Missouri from R3 to CBD. Motion by Nate. Second by Stacy. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Bill number 20-119, an ordinance levying, an ordinance providing for the levying of city annual city revenue tax, public health tax, special dis, business district number two tax for the fiscal year ending on the 30th day of June, 2021. So moved. Motion by Robbie. Second by Stacy. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Bill number 20-120, an ordinance amending chapter 26 of the Code of Ordinances in the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri regarding helmet requirements. So 
It's out moved. Motion by Robbie. Second. Second by Stacy. Any discussion? I don't think we any of us agree with this one. But I guess we're still We have stuck, to comply so. with state law. Yep. But at least we said we don't really like it. State law says it's the way it is even if we don't agree, right? That's right. Yeah. We're just be in conflict and we don't we can't be. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 20-121, an ordinance submitting Chapter 17 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Girl, Missouri regarding regulation of methamphetamine precursor drugs. Motion by Nate. Second. Seconded by Robbie. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Motion carries. Bill number 20-122, an ordinance accepting temporary construction easements from various property owners for the Good Hope drainage project in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. So moved. Motion by Robbie. Second. Second by Shannon. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Uh, we have no appointments this morning. Uh, and other business, I thought we would have our, uh, if anybody wants to discuss the uh, issue of the P&Z <coughs> apology, and uh, we'll go from there. I'll, I'll speak up. Um, I know Kevin Greaser for the better part of 15 years of my life. Um, I worship, worship with him at church. I've worked with him. Um, I understand that words can be hurtful. I think that much like Porch did as well, uh, you look at the actions of a person. And in Kevin's case, I look at what he's done for the Salvation Army. I look at what he's done um, as uh, on Porch with... Um, the United Way, and and um, and I know it's hurtful, uh, but I support Kevin, and um, I just speak to the, the 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 actions of Kevin over the the last since I've known him, and, and even before that. So um, I, I I thought that it was important to say that piece, but for so. Anybody else? Yeah, I've got something to say. Um, in my opinion, since the comments were made in a public forum, I think the apology should have been made to the public in person. Not just a letter. I agree. I <clears throat> think that even though they didn't know that the uh, microphone was on or whatever, it's still, it's still a sign of what was in your heart. And he spoke out of his heart. And in order to, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I, I, the paperwork for it as having saying, excuse me, doesn't weigh heavy with me at all because, like I said, I think the community was wounded by the statement and I think that they should do an open, uh, uh, saying I'm sorry. They should say it out loud to the community. I really believe that's the way I feel about it. Nothing against Greek, uh, Kevin, it's just that it was done in the open and it should be done again in the open. And that's repenting or saying I'm sorry. Did Porch make that a requirement too? Or did that, Porch, that? all Porch did was Ask him to come in so that we could find out what was down because we didn't know that that had happened. So when we asked to come, when he came in and, and uh, talked with us, we told him at that time that you know, as far as we was concerned, you know, he he hadn't did anything. He had did the right thing, but we also said that he need to speak with the community because they too heard it and they too. Saw the, the uh, saw the article, not saw the film. So I don't think that he should 
none of them should. The three that was involved, it wasn't just Kevin. I mean, I asked Kevin to, to uh, come before the people and say that what he said here. But did somebody say something? I said he know he, he know he doesn't have to say it because he has people backing him. And let's be honest, because you go to church, that doesn't excuse you for bad behavior, okay? I, I know. When you, when you go to church, that you can go, hey, everybody get up and go to church. Demons go to church, okay? Monsters, rapists, killers yeah, yeah. go to church. That does not make you a good person. You walk in there crooked and you walk right back out crooked. Well, so, but get back to what, I, I understand. Who said he went to church? Anyway, getting back to what we, I was saying. Um, porch, since uh, Bobby brought it up, Porch only talked with him. We did not uh, vote or anything. We just talked with him and, and uh, to share our feelings about it. But at the end of the day, I've said it to him personally that I feel like he needs to come before the people and say he's sorry. I don't know how he's going to do it, but that would be the best way to do it because if it not only put a blight against to him, but it also does for the city too because he is on that PZ uh, committee and it should, he sh he's, he's a standard that everybody's looking at or looking, you know, beholding and trying to find out if he's what he say he is. But like I said, even though the, the, film, the, the camera was still going, the, the fact that he's, they said that they had that discussion in here, if they had it done it at their house, that, that was one thing, but they did it here. It happened to hit the community, and now I think they need to apologize to the community. And let me say this, not just African Americans, because we got more than African Americans in this city. It's for anybody that was not a Caucasian. And I don't research and I don't look for every definition of Marxism if I could, that I could. And at the end of the day, it doesn't change anything. It won't ever change my skin. It will never change the Indian skin. It will never change nobody. It just needs to be done right. And like I said, coming out of speaking like that, it came out of his heart and they was used to talking and not realizing that that camera or the whatever was going on. And I feel, you know, that he need to do that. That's just how I feel. I'm sorry they got caught. Huh? Sorry they got caught. Oh, I thought somebody said it up here. Uh, that was me. Yeah, you know, we, yeah, we, I, we, all, we all make mistakes. Don't get me wrong. I, I'd really like to read this. Dan can't be heard, but I... I want to read this for Dan Press and... Um, I'm, um, we need for all the city board members to realize that they represent the city of Cape when behind the uh, desk in council chambers. The leadership language needs to be used by all. We need to make an effort to learn about the struggles of others and to empathize when in positions of influence. Dan Preston. I think with the discussion tonight, P and Z meeting, you may have public apologies made by both gentlemen. Okay. Uh, that's up to them. That's not up to us. But right, sure. It'll be more. We don't need their sorry. We need to see changes. You said what? I didn't hear you. I don't want to see their sorries or hear their sorries, their apologies. I guess that's good, but we would rather see changes in the community. Okay, then you gotta. You okay? I hear you. Well, there may be change coming in the community. We don't know that. Yes, we do. Uh, at this time, if uh, there's no further action or further discussion, I will entertain a motion that we adjourn to closed session to handle legal actions, litigation, confidential communication, legal counsel, and personnel matters pursuant to revised section Missouri 6, section 610021 and 3. So moved. Right. Made and seconded, and we will adjourn the closed session.
two different complete items.